feel, Hey, I, you know, this is, I'm doing really good at this, you know? And, um, it was like, man, I could actually make it to the MLB as a high inning reliever. And, you know, that's what I did. Welcome back to another episode of Champion School. My name is Ray Mack. Joining me, as always, is BZB Austin Byler. And uh, today we got a big one. Uh, Ty Butchery, he is joining us. He was a former big league pitcher for a couple of years and ended up stepping away from the game and now does a lot with social media and his Beyond the Lights uh, foundation or, or group business. It is what it is. But he did a great job. Awesome guest for us joining us. But first of all, BZB, how you doing? Doing great, Ray. It's a great day. One day away from Thanksgiving when we're recording this thing. So the Thanksgiving Eve. And uh, I'm excited. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food, Ray? If you had to pick one food for Thanksgiving? Stuffing. Flat out. Stuffing? There's no other reason. There's, what, what are you shocked for? Stuffing? What? Stuffing out of stuffing. everything, dude? Yeah. On everything. Stuffing with some gravy. You know, out of, out of everything. That's why you do Thanksgiving. What? What, what's yours? I Dude, guess. candied yams, without a doubt. Just throw some marshmallows, some brown sugar, some cinnamon on those things. Bake them up, eat them, we're I good. Can, I'm going to tell you right now that candied <clears throat> yams is not something that across the board Americans are all eating. That sounds pretty specific. Well, our family eats them, and I will never <laughs> stop eating them. <laughs> so that's that's it. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's yeah. fact. You're gonna have to send that uh, on to me, the recipe. See what we got. Okay, because we that's not a, not a staple in our family. You, you and Emac can can make the dish for the fam. We love that. <laughs> love They're good. That. They are bomb. I gotta admit, they are bomb. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Not as good as Stephanie, I'm sure. But. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, what's new with MLU? Yeah, MLU. Everything's moving in a really cool direction. We've we've kind of taken a few steps forward again and. Um, a lot of cool stuff happening here this fall kind of dying down a little bit with Thanksgiving and then the holidays and then with a lot of the colleges are done and high schools are kind of just kind of shifting over to winter ball so got a few high school things local coming up here early December Um, we got a camp coming up December 20th to 22nd in Arizona it's our annual winter baseball camp going to be a blast we've got five six kids signed up already so that's going to be a really good event it's going to be a lot of fun we'll have some good people out there three days out there in the mornings having some fun and just like last year enjoying it out in in that space there and then uh, looking forward to a good January and spring we've got a good spring a lot of stuff set up from January to to roughly March um, with some tentative dates shifting around so good stuff some new locations a lot of same locations of good people that we've been to before we love going there we're excited to be back Uh, very grateful for the direction we're moving in that camp last year like exploded yeah. in the last week leading up to it. Everyone was getting out Insane. of Thanksgiving and family time, and uh, that tur- it was a really good event. It was fun. Uh, a lot of great kids, obviously some kids that you've known over the years, and uh, some families that we're, we've become pretty close with. So it's been pretty cool. Uh, anyways, let's get into the good news of the week. All right, good news of the week. I have two things. Uh, let's start with number one. Uh, statistic, more than 70% of older Americans feel younger than they actually are and are embracing aging. What are your thoughts? Hey, embrace it, baby. Wear it. <laughs> Wear it. I don't know. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't even know what I have on it. I think it's pretty cool. That's an interesting statistic. I'm glad they feel younger. I actually had the thought the other day. When I'm older, am I going to feel like I can still move? Like I can move now or not? Like, no. Is that catch up? <laughs> is that, it's like, yeah, probably not. But yeah, I think it's cool. Hey, live your best life. If you feel younger, I think everybody's just a bigger kid. That's what it looks like. You just get to be an older mm-hmm. kid. That's really all it is. So if you have that kid's mentality, a lot of cool things happen for you. So hey, ride it out. If you feel younger, good. Rock it. There you go. The, uh, yeah, I was reading some book. It was basically saying that as your lifespan goes on, right around the late 30s 40s you start to see a dip off and where people start feeling like less happy about their life generally Mm. 
But after that 50 range, when you start getting back, it's like exponential growth until they pass on, you know, whether that's a hundred or whatever, but it's like exponential growth. And the thing it's like, well, that's weird because like time's ticking for them, you know? But I think in that early stage of your life, we go, man, we have all this time. Like, I don't need to enjoy it all or whatever. But when you get to the back half, you're thinking like only the positives, right? There's no reason to dwell on anything uh, too serious. So uh, yeah. yeah, pretty, pretty interesting stat. Do you think it's a lot of just perspective shift as you get older? And then like, I'm sure a lot of people retire, so they have a little more time on their hands too, but like kind of just that perspective shift and seeing a lot of things being around for a while. I would assume that I, I, I'm 30. So I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm acting young. like you're 75 right now. <laughs> <laughs> let's not, let's not get too serious on that end, but yeah, no, I think perspective shift. I mean, I think, uh, the big thing is uh, like that, that, you know, we think of happiness book or whatever is, they're only remembering the good things because that's all they want to you know like for us at a younger age we can we have to hold on to some of these things to remember like hey this person did me wrong or for this reason or whatever but later in life like you just don't need that information anymore so uh why keep it you know so mm. I, I don't know. Interesting. I, I again, I have another thirty years till I start taking <laughs> into that range. But I thought it was a cool stat. So that's a great stat. I like that. Good news. Uh, number two, good news. Uh, books came in. So for those Let's of you go. people that uh, don't know, we're pretty big Gary Vee fans, and Gary Vee's been putting on this thing where his new book release. He basically you buy twelve of them, and he'll send you an NFT. So we bought a bunch and. Uh, we're looking to give them away and the book itself is great it's got good content it's kind of what we're about similar with the pillars but uh it came in and we're sending these out to people so i just wanted you guys to see it it's called 12 and a half um and we've basically been pumping it on twitter so we're going to pump it out to you guys now too so anybody that would like one of these just leave a comment below uh, we'll get in touch with you and we'll see how many we can give out. I mean, we have several that we're willing to give out, but it's been a great book. My wife's diving into it already. Um, yours haven't come in though yet, huh? No, I've got 36 on the way somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it was that or if it, I, I think I got mine through Amazon. You got yours through Barnes. So yeah. I believe the last email and I got to go back and find it was like December 13 to 28 or something. So maybe a christmas gift we get 36 of those things rolling in i might even have ordered an extra 12 i don't remember so <laughs> we'll see what comes up and there what shows go. up to the door i'm fired up though how's the book have you have you dove into it a little bit yeah i haven't gotten past like i've started the first <laughs> chapter i've done the the intro and whatnot but it's funny you read it because you when you know somebody or you feel like you know them because you've watched enough of their content like you read it in their voice you know so mm, i can yep. hear his pauses and his like the way he gets hyped up and comes back down or whatever but yeah it's pretty good it's good stuff and and he's always spitting the positivity so you know, this is one book that we felt very comfortable buying and uh willing to give out to people so Love it. you want a book leave it hey, in the comments drop the comment let's go that's right uh we got and we'll get into some more comments later because at the end of the show finally we have some people that left some comments and we want to shout them out but for now let's go ahead and move into this week's day All right, this week, Zan, uh, this is something uh, I was really I, excited to share this. Coach Tony Bloomfield, he's been working with us for a while at Davis, which is where I was at this fall, kind of helping out, helping the team get ready. And um, he had had some really good words of wisdom for the team uh, in one of our last few days. And I just want to share it with you. These are all things that kind of we've talked about, but he really bundled up really good almost like life lessons that everybody should know. So I just wanted to share with you and, and the people. So uh, I'm going to run through them. Uh, number one, be on time, show up dressed and ready. You know, uh, Lombardi time, as Jay says, but be on time. Uh, number two, be present. We talked about that on last week's podcast, be present. Uh, number three, act enthusiastic, be enthusiastic. Mm. Think till you make it. I uh, think that's key. Be a person of character. If you see something wrong, say something. Be sure to say something. Uh, don't be the guy that stands in the back. Uh, be a leader, not a follower. Compete in every area of your life. Rule number one, be a good teammate. Only as good as your worst player. Expect to win. And lastly, find your passion in life. Mm. Um, I think all of those were just, you know, general things that we've talked about and dove into, even in this segment alone. but. 
uh, for him to just kind of sum it all up like that was really great for the players to hear. And, and I was taking notes the whole time. So uh, any of those that stood out to you? That's huge, man. It's good for those those kids to hear too. And from somebody who's been around who's done it. So um, I think they all stick out pretty big and they're all like like good life lessons, right? Be ready, be, be on time, make sure you're there. The one that really sticks out though is find your passion. I think a lot of people get sucked into for different reasons, family, their own careers and, and passions, but they get sucked into things that really aren't their passion. And then they wind up at age 50, 60, 70, wishing that they would have chased their passions or done something different with their life. And so at a young age, if you can just be able to continue to reiterate that with different kids, athletes, anybody, but our students just be able to say, hey man, if, if you wanna be here, go for it. Like whatever your passion is, go chase it, find an avenue that's there for you. There's so many avenues out there in the world and there's just more and more by the minutes that keep being created by entrepreneurs. So go out there and be something different. You know, don't be afraid to chase your passion and be who you are and find something that you really love. Because at the end of the day, if you make 500,000 less dollars or 5 million less dollars or just five less dollars, but you love what you're doing, you're doing it for the right reasons and it's going to fulfill you so much more in the long term and you're going to live a happier, healthier life. So Chase your passion. That one's so big. I, I love that one. It just kind of boomed in my face. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, now I'm getting fired up. Act no, enthusiastic, no. be enthusiastic, baby. I like That's it. That's right, son. Um, yeah, and this prime example, right, it was Ty Buttry, who's going to join us here in a second. Uh, you know, he stepped away from baseball. The guy was making millions of dollars in, in the big leagues and uh, very similar to myself. And I know you've had some bits of, you know, just performance anxiety is a real thing, you know, so... Um, he was able to step away and, and uh, you know, he's leading a pretty great life right now. It might not be the lights, camera, millions of dollars life, but he's happier, you know, which is, I think, rule number one. You need to find your own happiness. So uh, I'm going to jump into this this uh, interview here and then we'll talk about it afterwards. God bless you. Uh, awesome guests joining us today, uh, a legend in his own right, along with Jared Perkins as well. But today we have Ty Buttery. He is with us and he's going to be breaking down his uh, journey through baseball, really. Um, but before we get into all that, Ty, go ahead and break down for us, for the people, just a little bit of your background and, and how you got to where you're at today. Yeah, I mean, um, sorry, if I got a like sinus thing. So if I sound a little weird, it's just all good. Um yeah, so basically, you know, pitched two and a half years, almost two and a half years in the MLB, five and a half, spent five and a half years in the minor leagues with the Boston Red Sox. Um, you know, was born, I'm just kind of hopping around, born in Charlotte, North, or born in Ohio, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, pretty much raised there, went to Providence High School, uh, drafted in the fourth round by the Red Sox, like I said, spent time there, traded to the Los Angeles Angels, where I was a seventh eighth inning kind of fireman setup role um had you know decent amount of opportunities as a closer um kind of just you know high leverage situations reliever hard thrower um yeah man just you know now i'm i guess you could say uh, retired in the prime of my career to pursue other passions and here i am sitting in um my house right now that's a little messy so other than that that's just kind of a snapshot of who I am, but uh, on the sports side of it. Very nice. Uh, first of all, before we get into where you're at now, let's talk a little bit about your time in professional baseball. Uh, everybody's had their ups and downs, uh, but for you, uh, your story's special. So uh, if you could dive into your time in professional baseball with us, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, baseball was always something – you know, e even as a young kid, I look at my, just my career and it's like, I always had peaks and I always had valleys, you know, I was always proving other people wrong. And when I would get to a certain spot in my career, I would get a little bit complacent and then, you know, competition would get better than me. People wouldn't think I'm good. And that would kind of fuel me again to, you know, raise the bar and elevate myself. And honestly, that was how it was from the time I was in Little League, you know, not making all-star teams, being overlooked and then getting mad and being, you know, I want this. Um, you know, and I want to prove these people. Um, I guess you could always say though, I felt I was always going to be in the MLB. I mean, I had, I knew I had the ability. I knew I had the athleticism. I worked my ass off. 
Um, and I just kind of use that mindset of just, you know, outworking the competition, wherever there's a weakness, how can I solve it? Um, my, my brain was always going, trying to, you know, figure out how to get better, how to improve, um, you know, not, not the best for a pitcher. You need to kind of stay consistent, kind of what works, stick with it, you know, don't change it out. You know, that was ultimately a way you could say my, was a part of my downfall, not downfall, but, um, I guess like a con, a, a, neg a negative aspect of my game, but it was also my greatest strength. It's what drove me um, to be one of the best. And it excelled me into the MLB where I had, um, you know, some really good times, um, good years, but basically, yeah, I was, uh, man, I just, that was kind of a snapshot, you know, growing up, um, like I said, drafted as a high prospect by the Boston Red Sox, um, was a starter, couldn't really figure out my just that flow and the rhythm after, you know, fourth, fifth inning, having to develop a third, fourth pitch was um, I just I was really good with my fastball and change up and I had an OK slider. Um, I couldn't really get my curveball back that I had when I was in high school. And so I was always just trying to, you know, tweak and adjust as the starting role in Boston put me in the bullpen where allowed me to kind of simplify the game, which was good for me, um, allowed me to just kind of do what I do best. And that's throw hard, throw my change up. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, I was never, I was always, I always had the athleticism. I always had people believing in me. I believed in myself. I just, um, the consistency aspect of it, you know, that was something that was always, I just, you know, it was tough. It was challenging. And that's why to make it in the MLB, I have so much respect for these guys that can do it year after year. I mean, they're machines, man. Um, and obviously my story, you know, me walking away from the game, um, it's it's not necessarily like, a, you know, I, I don't look at it as I quit. I just look at it as I spent so much time, you know, training and doing all of the physical controllable aspects, you know, the mental side, doing all these things. And I just, at the end of the day, it was, um, it just kind of felt, it just didn't feel right. And so uh, I made that decision to leave, but I had an unbelievable experience. It was, you know, baseball gave me so much. I met so many awesome fans and um, grew as a person more than I think I would have ever grown in my life if I had another job. I mean, it gave me so much. I know it may sound like I speak negative about the game, but I don't think that's, you know, where I come across as I just, for me, I try to be very honest and transparent and the game. I never had that passion for the, the love of the game growing up. I just, I wanted to show people, I wanted to prove people wrong and I wanted, to, and I was going to do anything in my power to do that. So any workout, any mental skills thing. I just wanted to show that all the time. Yeah. For, I'll go one more before I kick it off to you, Jared, but you know, I don't think it's you talking down on the game at all. I mean, just telling your story, getting to professional baseball, even just getting drafted itself is uh, unbelievable. It's hard to do. And then, like you said, the consistency pieces is, is really difficult and, and to be doing it at the pro level, you know, um, for you, when you made that shift to the bullpen, you said it helped you a little bit. Um, because you could kind of focus on you a little bit and, and other guys you can see you know they go from the bullpen and they try and shift to the starter and that's where their comfort is um, when you made that shift to the bullpen uh, what was it that clicked for your head that was more like hey this is let me just do this um, well I'll take a step before that actually happened when I was struggling really bad as a starter in Portland I um, for me I, I I'm sure we all are you know very success driven you want to feel whatever you're doing, you just want to feel like you're doing a good job at it. Um, or you want to be better than what other people are. It's just, you know, we all have the inner competitive side to us and I want to be the best at what I do. That's not an arrogance thing. It's just how I carry myself. And so when I was struggling as a starter, I actually started taking online courses because I wanted to go back and be a veterinarian and go to vet school. And so I, all of a sudden had this new kind of reality of like, Hey, I may, even though I believed in myself, I'm like, all right, man, like you need to kind of figure this out because starting, 
you're spinning your wheels now for five years. Like you just, I was starting to like reality check. I'm like, man, am I not going to actually make it as an MLB starter? Like being a reliever, honestly, never even crossed my mind. I just, as a young kid, make 30 million, you know, win the world series, go seven, eight innings. <clears throat> never even thought about being a bullpen pitcher. And so I kind of transitioned into like, Hey, I may need to start getting my degree. And that kind of created some balance in my life. Um, kind of took away my anxiety, felt me, you know, I was like working towards other things. Um, and that actually, as soon as I started doing that, then they started, um, then the team's, talk to me and they want to put me in the bullpen. And so I was like, geez, man. All right. Now I really need to hammer down on school. Like they're putting me in the bullpen. <laughs> they lost faith in me. Yeah. Um, and like, but that was also a drive for me to be like, Hey, like you guys think I'm not good. Like I'll show you. And it just kind of worked out. I mean, I simplified. I just literally told myself, just throw the ball as hard as you can middle of the zone, get ahead top of the zone and throw a slider and a change up down. And I did that pretty much throughout my whole career. Um, but like, it was crazy just kind of the perspective and the mental shift that happened when I started to, you know, I, I know those two don't really correlate too well, but like, basically I found out, you know, starting wasn't my thing. I went and took these classes to kind of give me a little bit more perspective. It kind of set, gave me a little bit of a reset and refresh. And then the bullpen roll happened. And then I kind of started feeling, Hey, I, you know, this is, I'm doing really good at this, you know? And um, it was like, man, I could actually make it to the MLB as a high inning reliever. And, you know, that's what I did. Yeah, uh, that's great. And I, I kind of want to touch on something that you brought up when you were kind of, uh, leaving the game. And I think this is something that, even just normal human beings struggle with on a daily basis. And that's kind of trying to find our identity. And I think even as humans, we kind of lose our identity in what we do. And so we kind of take the successes and failures and what we do and think that that, uh, that, uh, that reflects about who we are as a person. Um, so when you left the game of baseball, like what were some of the steps that you took to uh, find your identity outside of the game? Man, um, you know, that's, Honestly, Jerry, that's so true, man, because my whole life was on the outside. It was a baseball player. That's what everyone saw me as. Um, I never felt I was a baseball player. And honestly, like this is embarrassing, but I'll admit it. Guys, like I didn't I went to one game before I was drafted, never watched baseball, was a big video game nerd, played a ton of Halo, yeah. played paintball. Yeah. Um, I loved like entrepreneurship and business and growing things, you know, getting better at stuff. Um, was not great at school, but I tried. Um, and so I guess just like coming to this new identity, everybody knew me as the baseball player. And I never, I was also, I kind of kept a lot of emotions in. I didn't really share a lot. I was always not a private person, but I didn't, I didn't like to get deep with like who I really wanted to be. And so you know, you start going down this path, you start playing this game for so long, you know, everybody around you is telling you how good you're going to be, how much money you're going to make. It's a very hard thing as a young kid to say, yeah, but I actually, you know, I don't really love it. You learn to love it because of high school, you know, you build that camaraderie with your teammates, your coaches, you're in the weight room, you're doing all these, you know, fun things. You're playing, the, you're playing outfield, you're stealing bags, you're playing the game of baseball. Pitching is a whole nother sport. And then all of a sudden things get serious when scouts and, you know, oh my God, I'm throwing 98 miles an hour in high school. Yeah. Well, you're going to make $2.5 million as an 18 year old. It's like, what? Like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And so I just found myself for like seven years, six years in just this constant growth stage, getting better, getting better, mental skills, learn about the game, controlling my breath. And I never once you know, I had those moments where, like I said, going back to vet school when I had a reality check. Um, uh, but basically, like finding who I was, I kind of found who I was as I was growing through all these growth stages, you know, doing the whole and I know this sounds kind of weird, but like the whole self-help stuff, you know, looking in the mirror, saying those mantras, repeating, up, you know, just things that because when I was playing, I wasn't happy, like I wasn't, you know, I, I wasn't very, I just wasn't content. I mean, I remember sitting there 
2019, my, my best season, I only had really like three seasons, but my best season out of the short stint I had, just like staring at the clock being like, when's this game going to be over? Like, why do I not, you know, I'm, I had an opportunity to potentially be in like an all-star ballot on my rookie year. And I just was, I didn't feel anything. I'm like, why do I not feel happy? Why am I not this? Um, because my outlook on baseball was strictly how, you know, what people thought of me. And, and when everybody thought I was good, I had nothing else to prove. I didn't have anything to work for. And so I just kind of fell flat and it's almost like I started getting addicted to like the falls because then I could get myself back up and focus again. You know, my focus was better when I was failing. It was hard for me to keep that focus going. So like, I know that's, I'm jumping around a lot, but basically, you know, somebody asked me to like, so are you on this journey of like finding yourself? I'm like, no, I'm actually like, I found myself, you know, found myself as they like to say, when I walked away from the game of baseball, because this is who I am, you know, mm -hmm. being with my wife, um, doing crazy things on social media, being myself, um, you know, teaching a baseball camp or a skills, you know, at sports camp with my wife and building a content creation company and like all these things, entrepreneurship business, like, I guess to answer your question, like who was I or how did I kind of find myself? I just found myself by you know, always trying to figure out, okay, I'm not happy. How do I be happy? I'm not this. Why do I feel like this? I, I've always been very aware of like my emotions and my feelings because that's how I grew. And so here I am, I guess. <laughs> you can see, you can see your face light up when you start talking about Halo 2 and entrepreneurship yeah. and stuff, yeah. right? Because I think at the end of the day, happiness comes from who we see ourselves as and what we're doing in real life and how closely is that aligned? Yeah. Um, you know, for me as a coach, I've, I've done the same thing where it's like, do I really want to coach? You know, like my dad says, I'd be great at it. The players love me, blah, blah, blah. But uh, at the same time, like, I don't know if that's in me. Right. And yeah. So that's a battle yeah. for you when you were playing, what, what I guess was the final straw then? Like, when was it you were like, ah, this is enough. Like, let me get on with my life. So I've actually been reflecting on that question a lot. And I, like I said, I, this is like, I, I think I got a pretty good answer because I try to, I, I may not have it. Like I may say an answer a year ago and it may kind of change and adapt into something different. But to me, that's okay because I was younger then we're growing up, we're figuring out kind of what these things are. And so I don't think just because you say something, it is what it is. Like I, the final straw for me, at first was, I just was done with baseball, you know, I hate it. I don't want to play. I don't like the game, blah, 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 you know, did this and that like, and then I kind of started reflecting on, okay, but like, how did I get to that point? Like you asked. And when COVID happened, um, Sam and I, you know, got locked down the whole thing, being stuck in the house trained. I mean, I worked my ass off being at the gym seven days. I was listening to David Goggins every day, just like maniac training, like just blew it out, trying to be the best that I could be. Um, and then I kind of realized, um, wow, like just put a lot of work into that. And we were kind of stuck in the house and I was like, Sam, we got to get out of here. Like, we just got to do something. So we bought this RV, um, never really traveled around. I mean, up and down the East coast when I was with Boston, in the minor leagues, but Sam and I got this RV traveled out to the season for the COVID, uh, COVID season, a three week period. And like I said, it sounds like hippie and like van life. And it wasn't necessarily like that. It just was a fun thing that I've never done before. And I started seeing, you know, we started traveling, we started doing our YouTube videos. We started doing Sam and I do these funny little gag things on social media. Um, and I was like, I was happy. I was like, man, I love this stuff. I love going out, seeing the world hiking and so, you know, we get out, we stayed in this awesome RV park in Newport Beach by the water. I started kind of thinking about, man, like we are products of our environment. You know, if our environment's great, everything's, you know, a little bit more happy. If we're in the concrete jungle and negative people and, you know, this and that, um, maybe not the happiest person. And so getting back to like, what was the final straw to me, I guess my whole life from the time I was four or five years old, 
I always had sports and I always had baseball. You know, it was never, there was never a time where I had a six month down period of, hey, you are not this baseball player anymore. You are like you and your wife, you know, everyone's in lockdown. You guys had to find fun. You, get, you had to find something that made you happy. Um, and I just started thinking, I'm like, wow, I've never not had something where I've been having to work towards. Like it just was the, the season was going to be talked about not even happening. And during that time when I didn't have baseball, I started drawing my, you know, started paying attention to, wow, I like social media a lot. I like traveling the world. I like being with my wife. I like being with my family. I like building other things. And that kind of seed, I guess you could say, just kept growing and growing and growing. And then when I came to the, um, you know, we kind of did that full tilt, the falling off season post COVID, obviously the COVID season sucked. I mean, not having fans, baseball should never ever be played without fans ever. It, fans make everything. Um, and that was kind of, that kind of put a bad taste in my mouth too. It's like, geez, man, like it, it was just the game at that point. There was no, there was no fans. Didn't really feel like we were playing for much. It felt fake. And it was like, the game was super isolated for that three month span for me. And I'm like, man, this is not really fun for me. And then train my ass off, went out the driveline, the following off season, worked my ass off in the gym, started trying to do baseball and business at the same time. Um, I, I was addicted to the business side of it. We were started, I almost started like a chimichurri business with some friends and a meal prep service, like <laughs> literally it. doing like anything to get my mind off of baseball. I was just going. And so uh, <clears throat> get to the season, get to spring training. And I just, I got back. I was super happy, ready to go. I was so excited for spring training. And I just, every day I showed up, I just was like, man, this is, I just felt fake. I just was like, I'm walking in and I'm trying to be happy and smile. And um, it just, that feeling didn't change. I'm like, I got to look like, there's something here. And that's when I just basically was like, you know, I know that's a long-winded question or a long-winded answer, but like you, there's a lot to, it's not just a simple, you know, right now kind of answer. Yeah. And I mean, I, your story is so powerful and I think it will impact so many people just because I, I think constantly in life, especially for young athletes, as they're growing up, th there's these external pressures that are constantly placed to make you feel like you should be acting a certain way, or you should be feeling a certain way um, just based on social media and things like that. And I, that's why I think your story is going to be, it's just so impactful because we're constantly inundated with this negativity. Um, so, what are some routines or steps that you kind of took to reflect on the positives in life and the things that you're grateful for? Cause I think that's something that can help the young athletes as they start moving up through the, whatever level that they're going to play at um, to always like kind of reflect on those things that bring them joy. And just curious on what some of those routines are. For you. Man, the, the routines are huge. I mean, I do a routine every day where I jump in a cold tub, 36 degrees. I work out every day. I do a red light. I drink my, greens I drink my health tonic and then I meditate six step routine but like that's what I do now post career um I didn't wasn't I wasn't very routine I didn't have a very good routine when I was playing which I think actually kind of hurt me but that's the thing it's like when I was talking earlier about you know some people who try to like they try to catch me and they're trying they try to like well, you're running a baseball camp and you hate baseball. It's like, yeah, but it's not singular like that. You can't just generalize. I yeah. know a lot about the game of pitching. I can help kids. I can use what I've learned to help kids not go through maybe a burnout stage, to not be the guy that focuses on, I mean, baseball 24-7, training 24-7. Like, I can tell you that really doesn't work out very well unless you're a, a psychopath machine and it's just how you function you're that type of guy not everyone's like that type of guy yeah and so you know as, as a kid it's not my story isn't to sit here and say don't play baseball it's a bad thing no if you love the game which so many kids do and there's so much good that comes out of the game of baseball impacts I mean changes people's lives my my biggest thing was the balance <coughs> sorry guys I got some I'm good oh, you're um good my biggest thing was the balance. Like it was, 
I put so much focus every game from a young, when I was young, it was, if I won, I was on the moon. If I did bad, I was down here. And I wanted to show people, I wanted to, you know, make everyone happy. And I wasn't playing the game for myself. And, um, you know, that's where it's like, I talk about leaving the game because I didn't like it. And that's just the truth. I, I strictly, I didn't like pitching. I liked the game, but what it did to me, it, how it, it, you know, impacted me, I wasn't a fan of. And I'm not saying screw the game of baseball. It's like, no, it's just, that's my personal reasoning. But as a young kid that, that sees this or watches this video or, or, you know, here's this message. It's be a kid, like be a kid that goes out there that when they play the game of baseball, it's like playing a video game. You get mad for five minutes. I mean, you guys, I'm sure played call of duty. You get mad for five minutes. You throw the controller, (laughs) you whine, but you can turn the switch off like that after five, 10 minutes. For me, I couldn't turn the switch off for days after. I mean, days I was thinking about a bad performance because my whole life was consumed on this, on being this MLB player and making a hundred million dollars versus being a guy that just was in the moment that played the game for fun. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, I wasn't like traumatized as a young kid. I had a very fun childhood. I had a fun time playing, you know, teammates and stuff. Um, but getting back to your question about the routine aspect, that's why I think so many, so many successful people in the world, not just baseball have routines because it helps them kind of get into this flow state every day. So as a young kid, you know, the mental side of uh, the game, um, you can really start learning about routines with that. I actually, uh, this camp we do behind the lights, give every kid a journal. um, And it has three words like be bold, be fearless, be you. That's kind of what, that's what I told myself a lot. Um, And it has day one. And so you write day one and you write the date. And then, you know, day one, day two, day three, you know, I did a journal for like five years of like 180 days. So day one, day two, and I'd write down my thoughts every day. Um, I guess I had a very good mental routine, mental skills routine. I didn't have a very good physical routine. Um, But, you know, on this journal, I, I would write down what I did well, what I learned and what I could have done better. And then I had a little summary section with I would write out how my day, you know, just kind of free flow talking. And then I would write down the three powerful words, whatever those were for me. And so um, as a young kid, you know, how do they establish these routines? I I think the biggest thing is, is just it's going to be hard to kind of grasp that concept for a 10 year old. You don't really, you know, 10 year olds are just go out, have fun, but just kind of introducing the idea of, listen, you know, what can I do to get better? Um, you know, kind of having a growth mindset, not letting it get out of control. Um, but I, I would just say like to sum all that craziness, I just talked for the last five minutes, the mental side, mental skill side, I think doesn't matter. Some people are better at it than others, but I just think, I think writing down thoughts, tell, having practicing some gratitude saying, I'm happy for my mom. I'm happy for the son. I, I think that stuff is just beneficial across the board for any age group. Yeah, the we love the journaling, first of all. That the journaling's changed my life for sure. And and it's yeah. just helped me with the affirmations and and being present. Um, <clears throat> real quick, and I'll I'll kick it off to JP for one more before we go into our game too. But uh talk to us about your business outside of uh, you know, baseball. You've moved on, you said a social media company. Uh your wife's name's Sam, I believe. Yeah. Um, break that down for us. Yeah. So man, we started this thing called drip social. It's basically a social media company, um, content creation, editing thing. Um, it's our, it's kind of our, our alter ego. Um, very loud, very bold, um, very eccentric. Got a lot of neon, got a lot of crazy, you know, editing going on. My wife is an amazing editor. She has been editing her whole life, worked at ESPN as an editor. Um, she just makes really cool videos. And so like, she's able to kind of like, every time she makes a video, I watch it like a hundred times. And, um, I just, I was like, this is really cool. Like social media businesses are going social. Um, everyone's, you know, people aren't watching TV as much. 
um, there's a learning curve, you know, like people don't know how to edit on, they don't know how to make, put their vision for their brand on the telephone to sell their product and to say who they are. And Sam's really, really good at that. And so we kind of created this like fun community where her and I get on live and we do social media lives. We talk about crazy, you know, we wear stupid shirts and crazy, cool, colorful outfits and stuff. We have fun. Um, and that's the drip social kind of thing. And it's basically an editing, teaching people how to edit, kind of find their voice on social, be who they are. Um, it's not, if you're asking for people who's like, well, what's your business plan and what's your five-step plan? And well, how are you going to break it? How are you going to make income? It's like, dude, I promise you that ain't, that's not what it's about, man. Like it's strictly Sam and I just having fun, helping some people out. Business side will come, we'll grow this. It's going to take years and years, um, to process. It's not a quick buck. That's kind of that side, right? That's this side. Then we have behind the lights which is a little bit more professional, um, emotional to Sam and I. Um, it's basically, it embodies, it's, you could say it's a lifestyle brand. Um, we have clubhouses where we have people come on, talk about things outside of sports. You know, tonight we're talking about the life lessons that sports teaches you. Um, we talk for an hour and people come on and we share stories and we kind of talk and, you know, and, and that's it. And then, Sam was doing player interviews um, two years ago on YouTube. You know, uh, we were showing our life on the RV when I was playing behind the lights. And so it's not now it's kind of turning. And this is, like I said, it's this whole kind of umbrella. Um, and then we had an opportunity to go down to St. Croix and teach about a, over 100 kids. We, we came in to their program and uh, we taught financial literacy um, mental skills, tactics, media preparation, and obviously athletic skill development. And so it was a huge success. And I said, Sam, this is actually, we can kind of create this camp model, put it, you know, have this be behind the lights um, and kind of create this nonprofit. So it's a, it's a, it's a nonprofit. It's a lifestyle brand. It's a whole thing. Um, it's early. We're kind of do, like I said, you guys know me now, like kind of form this as we grow, but we offer a very good um, product and we offer something that's not out there because everyone knows baseball camps now are just, you go to the baseball camp, you learn about baseball and it's great. Obviously I'm some do the mental side, but going back from my story and how I was being the total athlete, being a well-rounded human being, um, learning how to talk and speak on camera, learning how to handle your financials, learning about the mental side, the best, the best athletes, man, like they, they have either people doing it for them or they're really, really good at it themselves. And so this camp behind the lights, BTL, um, we kind of want to grow this and do a nonprofit and then kind of start running camps in the States. That's money. So in time, I'll be able to explain our two companies under five minutes but right now <laughs> your elevator pitch could come later brother you're good. yeah exactly i'm not great at it yet <laughs> that's what we'll do is uh when we're done here send me all of your links for everything because okay. we want to get it all in the description below yeah awesome we'll do go, go ahead jp yeah i just have to say that's awesome because it, that you've taken basically all your experiences and everything that you've gone through and you're using it to, to help others and i think that's that that's probably the biggest key takeaway i think for a lot of people is you're taking everything that you went through and using it for good and in order to kind of impact younger generations. I mean, yeah. I think the, the last question I have is just, if you have one piece of advice for the younger generations who are just trying to kind of make it in athletics, uh, what would that piece of advice be? Um, to not get caught up in being in the cool kid group, to um, be okay with being made fun of. I know being made fun of sucks. I got made fun of every single baseball level. I went to because I would always raise my hand and I would ask why, or I wouldn't understand it. Um, I needed things to be explained a lot to me to, to grasp it. And so young kids, they sit there, they just try to do what all their other cool teammates are doing. And that's not it, man. Like that's do you, if you want to make it to the top, you want to um, succeed and excel on a massive level. You got to be yourself. You got to stand out. You got to ask questions. You got to be okay with looking dumb. You got to be okay with being embarrassed. It's part of the process of growing. 
Um, but just, well, like I said, don't get caught up in doing what everyone else is doing because that's the cool thing to do. Truly find out it may, you may get made fun of for it. You may not, people may not like it, but at least you're going through life doing what you want to do. And as for me, I can speak of, you know, I wish there was things I did a little bit more, but always, no matter where I was, I was myself. I may have not enjoyed playing baseball as much as what I should have, but been, but I have always been myself and what I've talked about and what I've said, and it's, uh, it's helped me a lot. Perfect. Well, first of all, thank you so much for diving into your story and, and being open and honest, because you don't get a whole lot of that, you know, especially in uh, a world of bravado and the big leagues and whatever, you know, like you just don't get honesty. So I True. think our people are going to get a lot from this. So thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. And now are you ready? There's a, you're getting put on the hot seat. Okay. <laughs> I love games. Let's do it. Good. This is uh, called on or off it. I'm okay. gonna go through ten things, just random things, and you're just gonna tell us you're on it, you're for it, or you're off it. It's not really your thing. And then like, like a that. one sentence as to why. Okay. All right. Number one, going fishing. Off it. Extremely boring. I'm not good at it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Reading. Off it, definitely should be on it. Kind of the same thing as fishing. I'm not great at it. Um, I need to be, you know, kind of boring, but it's good for you. You know, fishing's good for you. I don't know. I'm, a, I'm, I'm off. I should be on it. You got, you're gonna have to write a book one day. So it, maybe it's audio, but who knows? I, I do audio. I love audio books. I love audio books. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Disney movies. Uh, off it. Just, they're cool. I just grab them. Yeah. Uh, Chinese food? On it. Heavily on it. Absolutely. <laughs> one of my favorite. Gosh, one of my favorite things. I love it. I love it. I love it. Nice. Uh, the NBA? Um, Never really was off it or on it. I never, uh, like I said, I don't, I didn't watch sports growing up. I went to one, I went to one NFL game, two NFL games, went to one NBA game, went to one MLB game. Respect the players massively, respect hard work and talent. Uh, just don't really care for it. I, I mean, it's, they're, they're cool guys. They got a cool little thing going on. I just, I off it or on it. Very good. Uh, the Bachelor. Um, uh, <laughs> I would say 50% off it, 50% on it. Okay. Um, my wife watches it. She loves it. I will sit there on the couch, plan to only be there for five minutes, and then end up staying for the whole entire uh, length of the TV show, asking her questions and being on it. So I don't really know why. <laughs> I know. It's hard not to get sucked into that stuff, isn't it? I know. Um, going sledding. Definitely on it. Huge fan of sledding. I love the snow. I love anything snowy, whatever, skiing. I love it. I'm big, big, big fan of sledding. Do you uh, ski or do you snowboard too? I skied a little bit when I was younger. Um, I was always worried about break, breaking like my legs or ankles with baseball. And yeah. I was like, you know, I would like go tubing, but like sledding was a little bit safer. Ride my, I had ATVs growing up. Um, I rode those all the time in the snow and we would, it was awesome. Sweet. Uh, Christmas music before Thanksgiving. Ooh, great question. Um, I'm actually on it. It makes yeah. me happy. I love Christmas. Um, I love people being cheery and happy. I love the holidays. Um, Thanksgiving, I'm sorry, is extremely boring. It's my least favorite holiday. Um, and as soon as Christmas, it just, I want Christmas all year round. So as soon as it's over, it's like an extended Christmas period. Definitely on it. Love that. I, was, I had some Michael Buble Christmas banging this morning. So I was yeah. like, <laughs> uh, bowling. On it. Not, not huge on it, but definitely on it. Um, I like being able to throw the bowling ball, bowling ball, absolutely as hard as I can. Hundred miles an hour. Like I, <laughs> sling, I, sling, I sling it, and when I get a strike, they all explode, and everyone's like, oh. <laughs> "They fans fly." Yeah, they they fly, and I and I get a light one too, so I can throw it even harder. But like, you gotta like really hit it. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm on. Very nice. Last one, Mario Kart. Hugely, hugely on it. I love that. Love Mario. 
any type of Nintendo 64 video game. I'm a huge gamer. Um, I don't play as much as I should. I've been busy doing other things, but Mario Kart, give me the, the blue turtle shell in the back, the star. The star is my favorite. Lightning Bolt is my second favorite. And I'm going to have to say the pink three turtle shells is mm-hmm. it's a cheat code having those three. It's not, not fair. <laughs> right on, man. Well, you dominated. That was great. Uh, yeah. For us, question for you. This is a little off topic. Do you know what an NFTs are? Do I know what NFTs are? Man? Are you in on it yet? God, I've been on, I've been in on it for about a month or for a year. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been in on a huge. I almost I almost got CryptoPunks back when they were fourteen thousand. Uh, I, could, I couldn't figure out how to transfer Ethereum, um, but I got some cool cats, some gutter cats, some V friends. Some world of women, some fame ladies, some koala intelligence agencies. Got a lot. I got over wow. 200 degrees. Jeez. See, I'm at 24. We're, we got one coming out. You know what we're going to do is we're going to. Oh, you guys got one coming out for real? Mm-hmm. Project Sandlot. It's uh, okay. money's right. are, pro, it's perfect. It's right up your alley. Proceeds are going to uh, Rob, Rob, Roberto Clemente Foundation, Boys and Girls Club, and then the uh, leftovers going to our Sandlot Fund, which will oh, be no free way. youth camps for, uh, for youth kids. So. We're gonna really? we'll send we're gonna send you a couple to give give away oh. and then we'll have you yeah. jump in on it. <clears throat> Definitely. How uh, how many how many are you guys releasing for this? Four, Forty two hundred, and we are oh, dropping okay. them. Uh, nice. January second will be whitelist. January fifth is public sale. Point zero four two. So we're keeping it Jackie Robinson. You know. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. Good for you guys. That's that's so awesome. I love that you're. I love those causes. That's that's so powerful, man. Um, so would would I be able to get it on OpenSea? Is that where are you guys going to be minting them and then resale will be on OpenSea? Or are you guys doing it through a secondary, a different yeah. marketplace? We'll mint them. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be on Project Sandlot dot io or okay. via okay. our website, but yeah. we'll get you all the info so you have it. Please um, do. I love I love to help out, share it any way I could. Yeah, you're. Are you on Twitter? I am, but I'm. It's yeah. at but underscore ty kind of. Uh, <laughs> i'm not too active all on instagram though but i can okay i'll, I'll get stuff on twitter it's just it's like i check it like once a, once a week well you're you're the most <laughs> active nft you know collector that we've had on our show for sure so well, i have a anon account that i have my um gutter pro gutter cat yes that's Here the one we want <laughs> that's the one i'm on i'm heavy i'm that's my secret account what's your what uh what fur are you with your gutter cat i got a gold cat um gold cat with a some cool hair um a black tank top on blue eyes awesome cat um i had one with the sunglasses um the shades and the do rag and then yeah uh, i had to sell him had to um take care of some bills um <laughs> god i'm so mad man because uh, i know they're and, four and, and a half I, now i know they're four <laughs> and a half I, they're up at seven i mean i'm gonna hold on i got i got two sets so i got the dogs the the rats, mm-hmm. the pigeons. I got two sets of them, and then I have a cool, like leopard, orange-looking one that's pretty awesome. But I'm so mad because doodles. I had three doodles mm. at 0.86, and I just checked, and they're at four ETH right now. I'm They've like, oh. exploded. I know. Brain vomit. Um, uh, brain vomit garden. I they're blowing up right now. Um, kind of a weird, trippy-looking thing. Um, I got them at 0.15, and they're at like 0.7 right now. So. I may have Jeez. to sell that. I may I may get some sod. Yeah. Yard, so I may sell those. Get some <laughs> Dude, we're gonna have to connect because this is up this my- is this is up my alley right here. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys got my number. Text me whenever. I love talking about NFTs and crypto and all that stuff, man. Dope. We will. Awesome. Thank- Thank you so much for coming on with us, Ty. This has been great, man. And uh, be sure to send us. We'll, we'll get all your links again, all in the description below so people can check you guys out and uh, be on the lights. And uh, what is your drip social? Is your social yeah, media? And yeah. right now, um, the website's getting finished. Um, I'll send you guys like the IG links. Um, yeah. I'm, we're close. I'm actually working on the drip social editing. Like we're trying to do a live webinar where like you come in, you make an account, you pay a monthly subscription, you pick your professor. And then you pick your time slot, but that website's being built. And then our actual website, because we're going to be doing baseball and dance for behind the lights. My wife was an NBA dancer. Nice. Um, we're building that website too. So I can send you the IG links. Um, appreciate you guys sharing those. And then, you know, I'd love to stay in contact and talk whenever you guys are awesome. Thank you. 
Yeah, Sam sounds like the most interesting person in the world. So she might have to be getting it on us too. She's more interesting than I am, man. She's, <laughs> she's awesome. That's awesome, brother. Well, thank you so much, uh, JP. Anything else before yeah. we send him off? Just thank you for sharing your story. I think it's going to impact so many people. And we just appreciate you taking some time to, to chat with us. It's been awesome. No, oh, no, you guys are, you guys are freaking cool. And I appreciate you buying into that story. And um, I know it's all over the place, a little bit scattered, but that's that's i try to be honest and authentic in who i am and that's right i spit what i spit what it is and you know that's that's my story so i appreciate you guys buying into that and um taking interest in this and um yeah so thank you for having me all right welcome back uh ty first of all thank you so much for joining us um if you guys haven't checked it out i i left it on my twitter uh he hosts a clubhouse every thursday night i know we talked about it briefly we'll leave all the links in the description below make sure you check it out but he's doing it every thursday night with his wife um you haven't seen the whole interview but you've seen little spits of it what, what are your thoughts on uh on ty yeah, the the biggest thing that sticks out is him having the courage to step away from something that he's really good at and moving in another direction for his own personal happiness that was so cool and just hearing that hearing a story now getting to kind of follow him on social media and being connected on twitter and instagram like just seeing some of those things where he's used his passions his uh, skill sets that he's developed through professional sports and now leading it into that social media company and some of the things he's doing to help people financially, mentally, physically, emotionally. So cool to watch and see that. So I think it takes a lot of courage and a lot of balls to be to, for just to say it is like to go leave something like that where you are getting paid, where you are the dude, quote unquote, and someone who people idolize to go follow your dream, wherever that is boom, follow your dreams to go do something different. So that was really cool to me. It really stuck out. And just the courage, man, Ty, it's awesome. Um, that bravery to go out there and do it. And then the trust from your your wife too, like having somebody in your corner who trusts you, who believes in you, who's there for you and you can do it together. I mean, that's got to just be ultimate synergy there. So a lot of cool stuff there, man, is really, really good. And I'm excited to dive into the entire thing too. Yeah. I mean, I think overall he says it easy is like, you know, do what you want to do. And, and whether that's something that people have told you your whole life or, you know, it's something you just feel like doing, like, go do it, you know, and it, life's too short. And um, I think I had said it, mentioned it in there. It's, it's very difficult to show up at day in and day out doing something that you're not excited for and, and let alone do it at 162 times at an elite level at a big league field. And you had to do it during COVID, you know, like where the fans are gone at that point. So like, None of us fault for that. And, and I think we're all pumped on who you are as a person and, and the things that you're bringing to our listeners is huge. So I, again, I, I really encourage everybody listening to jump in on those Thursday night clubhouses, um, you know, and he's a big time NFT guy, as he mentioned at the end of the podcast. So uh, gang, gang with the gutter cat gang. It is what it is. So, uh, anyways, that's going to do it for us. Again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we can't thank you all enough. Oh, oh one second. We have two, we just haven't had this happen. We have two people that have reached out uh, and hit us on comments uh, and, and we're gonna quote them as uh, ratings basically on YouTube. So if you leave a comment, we will shout you out. And number one is gonna go out to Gareth Hooten who has been a big time supporter of us. Uh, he's down in New Zealand actually. Uh, and he says, yo, slowly watching back through episodes, loving your work at Ray Mac MLU. Is that Echo? This is the guy we asked this like, for, for you listeners, this is, this is like two months it. ago. We asked we that question. It. Bang. So we, we nailed it. We sent him a second Derek Jeter uh, NFT for free um, for, for doing that, which was awesome. And then uh, Colton uh, reached out and he put down, let's go with like 15 zero. So uh, <laughs> just want to give you guys shouts out. Shout out, Colton. Shout out, Hoots. Let's go. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for the support. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a comment. We will review it. We will read it. We're excited. Thanks for the listeners. It's been growing, which is cool on all platforms. So if you can't watch on YouTube, listen on Spotify or Apple. If you can't listen on there, watch on YouTube. If you can't get them all, go on Twitter, Champion School Podcast, MLU. You can go find us there. That's a wrap. It's going to be me, Ray Mac. That's the easy <laughs> <laughs>